Welcome back to the channel. I recently came across this LinkedIn post by Raja Shekhar, who is presently a manager at Analog Devices. I actually got to know about quite a few things from speaking to him. You guys could gather insights from his journey as well. I'd recommend that you check out my video chat with him by clicking on the icon at the top right of the screen. Coming back to the post, he wrote about finding the frequency content of a pulse width modulated signal. Basically, if you know the duty cycle of the signal, then how can you estimate whether that signal would contain any power at a particular frequency? In this video, we'll look at how that can be done in a simple manner and towards the end of the video, we'll recap some basic properties of a periodic signal which can come in handy when dealing with periodic signals. Suppose that you have a periodic pulse with 50% duty cycle, just for the ease of drawing and understanding. What we will discuss in this video holds for any arbitrary duty cycle as long as the signal is periodic. Let's assume that the period for the pulse is T. We can also mark the X and Y axis as shown. For such a case, a corollary of the Fourier series is that the periodic pulse width modulated signal, let's call it X of T, it can be expressed as X of T equals to A1 sin omega T plus A2 sin 2 omega T plus A3 sin 3 omega T and so on, where omega is 2 pi over T. Now, we wish to estimate that which of the coefficients amongst A1, A2, etc. are zero, indicating a zero power at that corresponding frequency. The interesting trick here is that if we multiply the periodic signal X of T with another signal, which is a sinusoid at a particular harmonic frequency, and then we compute the average, we can then estimate the coefficient A1, A2, etc. corresponding to that harmonic frequency. Well, to make more sense of what I just said, let me illustrate the point through the 50% duty cycle periodic pulse. Since the signal has a period of T, we should of course expect to get some signal power at the fundamental frequency. And thus, A1 should be non-zero. First, let's plot sin omega t on the same axis and then take the product of the two signals. We can assume that we have scaled the amplitude of the PWM signal to be plus minus plus one or minus one. So in the positive cycle of sin omega t, it is multiplied by plus one and in the negative cycle, it is multiplied by minus one meaning that the negative cycle can be flipped over the x-axis. Visually, it is clear that this product signal has a non-zero average, confirming that the signal power at the fundamental frequency is non-zero. Similarly, we can confirm for the second harmonic. Now, we need to take the product with sine of 2 omega t, which can be plotted as follows. We can see that the entire period is multiplied by either 1 or minus 1. Since the average within one period of a sinusoid is 0, thus the average after multiplying by minus 1 or plus 1 either is also 0. Therefore, we obtain a 0 average, confirming that the power content at the second harmonic is indeed 0. This procedure can be done for any harmonic and for any duty cycle signal. But why does this work? Well, let's dabble into a bit of maths to understand that as well. Suppose that we multiply x of t with sine of omega t and then compute the average. What we have is that the product can be expressed as a1 sine square omega t plus a2 sine 2 omega t times sine omega t plus a3 sine 3 omega t times sine omega t and so on. Two trigonometric properties that can simplify our algebra is that 2 sin a sin b is equal to cos of a minus b minus cos of a plus b. And the other is 2 sin square a is equal to 1 minus cos of 2a. Using these, we can simplify the product as a1 over 2 times 1 minus cos 2 omega t plus a2 over 2 times cos omega t minus cos 3 omega t and so on. If you compute the average, meaning the integral over one time period t divided by t, then you will notice that only this term consisting of a1 over 2 remains. Rest are all zero. Thus, the average gives a direct estimate of a1. 
In this case, to be more precise, it's equal to a1 over 2. You guys can repeat the same exercise for other harmonics or experiment with different PWM signals and see how it works. Before concluding the video, I'd like to mathematically state that suppose you have a periodic signal x of t such that x of t equals to x of t plus k times tp where k is an integer and tp is the period then xt can be expressed as some a0 plus 2 times summation from 1 to uh, from n equals to 1 to infinity an cos of n omega t plus bn sine of n omega t where omega is 2 pi over tp and also to compute an an equals to 1 over tp integral from 0 to tp xt cos omega nt dt where n can be 0 1 2 3 and so on and bn equals to 1 by tp integral from 0 to tp xt sin omega nt dt where n is 1 2 3 and so on in our example i smartly ignored the cosine terms and also the dc content a naught because i conveniently placed the axis in such a way that they would be zero Basically, I placed the axis such that x of t was an odd function and thus required only sine components to be expressed. If I had placed the axis something like this, then I would have an even function and thus only cosine components. Hope you guys liked today's discussion. Make sure to smash the like button if you did and I recommend that you check out these videos next. One of them is a playlist containing my candid conversations with several folks from the industry. Until next time, happy learning.